Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today on this episode, we've got some breaking news. Not really breaking news, because if you guys actually, you know, go on Bassmaster.com or Bass Fan, you probably already saw this. Uh, it came out yesterday. They came out with the Bassmaster Open schedule, at least part of it, because as you guys know, they announced this year that they're going to be doing a totally different format two different divisions of four tournaments and out of those four tournaments in each division if you finish in the top 50 in each in either uh you make it to the three fall eq series um which you know are i think 2500 hundred dollar entry fee and uh and you know just boaters and stuff like that so uh different format and so they announced yesterday at least a portion of that schedule um the two divisions okay so we've got eight tournaments and i also told you that i was going to be fishing one division now that was for a lot of different reasons financial reasons um but also because i don't want to be spending that much time away from home and also i feel like a lot of my value is doing youtube videos and and you know uh you know just just talking to you guys. So we're going to be doing a lot of content next year, and I don't want to just be uh, on the road constantly fishing the Opens. Now, when, when once we make the Elite Series, I'm all in, tournament fishing. Uh, that's, I mean, that's my passion, right? Um, but for now, one division sounded perfect to me. That's seven tournaments. I can fish in some Toyota Series, maybe some BFLs, local events, all that different stuff. Um, but uh, the big question is, which division am I going to fish? But before we get into my opinion on that, uh, let's go over the overall schedule. So here we go. Bassmaster.com. Got to go all the way through. Whoa, come on. Tommy Sanders. All right. So we've got the two divisions here. Division one. Clarks Hill Reservoir, January 23rd through the 25th in Evans, Georgia. Uh, the second tournament is Tom Bigby River, April 16th through the 18th in Columbus, Mississippi. Uh, the third tournament is Upper, Upper Chesapeake Bay, July 23rd through the 25th, uh, and that's in Northeast Maryland. And then we have St. Lawrence River, July 31st through August 2nd, Waddington, New York. So two back-to-back -back events on Division 1. Um, Division 2 is Sam Rayburn Reservoir, February 13th through the 15th, Jasper, Texas. Kentucky Lake is 2nd, uh, March 6th through the 8th, Paris, Tennessee. Norfolk Fork Lake is 3rd, April 3rd through the 5th, M Mountain Home, Arkansas. Miss Mountain Home. I haven't been there for a while. Uh Leech Lake is the final event, August 14th through the 16th, Walker, Minnesota. So pretty much both divisions start fairly early. There's some big gaps in time. You know, I put my uh, put the schedule on my personal schedule last night, and there is some big chunks of time in between uh, for, for both schedules. So there's pros and cons for both of them. Um, the uh, last tournament, the latest tournament, is mid-August. So, assuming they start the EQs in the first week of September, you know, you've got like a two-week window before that starts. Um, all right, so let's kind of go over the fisheries and like what I think of them. Um, just kind of my, my personal opinions. And my opinions, obviously, are going to be... Uh, different now that we have a totally different landscape in tournament fishing when it comes to you know forward facing sonar and, and that sort of stuff that's a big consideration whether or not you accept it or not it's it's definitely a big um big factor when it comes to you know how you're going to approach fisheries nowadays um clark's hill reservoir january 23rd 3rd through the 25th uh, Clark's Hill is actually a really cool fishery. You, there's, there's a lot of different opportunities, um, both deep and shallow, but being in January, it's, pr it's probably going to be a pretty good, um, you know, active target event, forward facing sonar event, uh, lots of fish, you know, in deeper areas, that sort of thing. I don't really know 
you know, what else to, to say on, on Clark's Hill. I think Clark's Hill, uh, there's probably going to be a lot of different things, but I think that one's going to be something that, that, uh, a lot of guys are going to be looking at them with the graph on the front. Um, and that, that being said, they are, um, adopting the elite series rules as far as, uh, you know, total screen space and also having one transducer. So they're going to standardize that rule set between the opens and the elite series, which I think is a good idea. Um, all right. So Tom Bigby, this is one out of both divisions. I'm really excited about because it is a, a river system that I've never fished before. Uh, but I've looked at it on the map yesterday and boy, does it look good. It just looks so fishy and just, it's a, it look, to me, it looks like I can go shallow water power fish to my heart's content. There's, there's just so many backwaters, so many, uh, you know, oxbows and sloughs. And look at this, look at this April 16th through the 18th. That is a critical time period right smack dab in the spawn i think even for that region of the country it's like northern mississippi so i think that's going to be a really fun event upper Ches chesapeake bay i've heard mixed reviews on that one over the years on you know guys that fish like me either love it or hate it um but you know it's a unique fishery and i could probably go through a chatterbait which is is nice and that's going to be in july here so heat of the summer and then back to back you've got the saint lawrence river right after it july 31st through august 2nd so that is a true back-to-back -back tournament you gotta just book it you know if you're in the top 10 you're probably missing a day of practice to get up there to the saint lawrence up to waddington i have not had great events up at the saint lawrence river but one thing that that has been consistent throughout my career is I don't always have bad events at places. <laughs> I tend to learn. I get angry at those fisheries and I figure it out. So uh, I feel like I learned a lot from last year. And last year was not a good year for me. I ended up having to go to the hospital and and missed two days of practice. And, and it was just all over the place. But I'm actually really excited to go to, to uh, the St. Lawrence River if I decide to fish this division. All right. That one's definitely going to be, you know, I don't think you have to like uh, fish just live sonar at the St. Lawrence River. You could drift flats and do all kinds of stuff. So there's a lot of different opportunities. Division two, Sam Rayburn in February, for sure. That is going to be something that, that um, you know, a live sonar is going to be a big deal. Uh, Kentucky Lake in March 6th through the 8th, pre-spawn deal. Um you know, there's probably going to be some room to do some other things, but that's also going to be kind of a, you know, live sonar deal, I think. Norfolk, April 3rd through the 5th. That's like, April's a good spawning month, but the 3rd through the 5th, early April, it's going to be right on the edge. If you get some warm weather, you, you might have some spawners. Uh, otherwise, I do think that, that that lake fishes pretty deep but I'm not an expert on uh, Norfolk. And then Leech Lake, you can do a wide variety of things, but we saw, you know, the the guys, um, you know, scoping or using active target. They did pretty well there last year. So that being said, I want to show you guys, just give you a visual on how it lays up. All right. So we got the schedule. I, I made my personal schedule last night for 2025. The green is division one. The, the pink is division two. Obviously division two, you know, we start with division one in January, but then you have, you know, a tournament every month, you know, from February, March, and April in division two. And uh, and then we ha have in April, mid-April, the second tournament in Division One, And then you have a huge gap. So we got, you know, the beginning of turkey season and then the rest of turkey season completely open there for, for either divisions, which is nice. And then we got like ledge fishing, just fun fishing out on Lake Chickamauga open. And then at the end of July... You have back-to-back -back Division I tournaments and then your last Division II tournament. So that's kind of how it, a visual of how it spreads 
out across the schedule, and then we got to fill these. Come on, man. Come on, bass. Tell us where we're going to fish in the fall. That's all I ask. There's a lot of people out there. I just talked to somebody that that you know they've got to they got to plan some some important events, and so they need to know at least the dates. So, come on, let's let's get that schedule out there. Let's know where we're fishing in the EQs. You know, if we qualify for those three tournaments at the end of the year. All right. So, uh, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you. It's pretty much, I'm pretty much 80% on Division One, And the reason for that is um, I'm still figuring out my footing with, you know, the new techniques, you know, that the, the jig head minnow techniques and some of the other things that guys are doing with, with um, you know, uh, live sonar uh, that is dominating nowadays. Still getting my footing. So Division Two seems pretty heavy on those type of techniques doing well and excelling in that schedule. So division two, I think I said division two, division two is, is pretty heavy on that division one. You got a couple events that, you know, you can mix it up. You can, I can go do my thing, throwing a chatterbait or flipping and pitching and doing that sort of stuff. So division one, I think is where I'm going to uh, focus my efforts. And also I like, that we've got back-to-back -back events um, up north because we also have a place in Connecticut I want to go to at some point this year, and that'll get me up there. And it just gets two, two events out of the mix right off the bat. And then I got all this time, you know, I've got all this time in early spring and the middle of summer, and all that time at home, great content, creating time, I, I love that. And also fishing the Toyota series and stuff like that. So I think that's the division that I want to fish. The Tom Bigby River looks like so much fun to me. I mean, it's probably a tough river system. River systems usually are fairly tough. Uh, but it, it just seems like my style of fishing, you know. And Chesapeake Bay, I'm not much of a tidal, you know, water fisherman. But, you know, I... I Feel like I can get it going over there too. Um, St. Lawrence, love love the St. Lawrence as far as like the scenery, the fishing's outstanding. I just gotta you know I gotta figure things out up there, and then Clark's Hill, that is, who knows who knows what's that what that's gonna be like. So, anyways, guys, uh, that's my take on the Bassmaster Opens. I'm pretty positive I'm going to be fishing Division one next year. I think that's my best option if I want to make the EQs at the end of the year through one division. I think that's the one I have to fish, and it's super close. I mean, the first the the first two events are right here, you know, pretty much uh, within four hours of me. So, all right, guys. That is my take. Um, let me know what you think about the schedule. I think it's kind of weird. A couple things, you know, we're not going to Florida. That's kind of weird. Maybe they're they're saving Florida for the EQs at the end of the year. I kind of have a feeling that they're going to do that. Maybe mix in a Harris Chain event uh, at the end of the year like they did last year. Um, hopefully not. I really don't want to fish the Harris Chain again. I've just constantly fished the Harris Chain. I want to fish Okeechobee or Kissimmee Chain or even the St. John's, just somewhere else. But I'll fish the Harris Chain if I have to. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, uh, I'm just surprised that there's so many big gaps in the middle of the schedule. So, all right, guys, that's all I have to say. Really glad that they finally came out with the schedule. Waiting on those last three. Um, so hopefully those will be coming out very soon so we can get our schedules complete. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Remember, we've got that BassBoatElectronics.com promotion going on right now where you get, if you buy a HDS 10 Pro with the HD 3-in-1 transducer, using the link in the description below, you can not only get a free hoodie, but a free mega gift from uh, BassBoatElectronics.com of a Active Target 2 system. That is a pretty substantial gift 
uh, for free. All you have to do is click on that link. It'll take you to the HES 10 Pro uh, with HD and 3-in-1 transducer. You click on that, put it in your cart, put the, uh, the hoodie in your cart that should be at the bottom, and also put the, the Lowrance Active Target 2 system in your cart, and that'll show up as $0 because it's a gift to you. So go check out that promotion in the link below, and I'm gonna see you guys out on the water. Trust the process.